This is Manhattan's Chinatown, a historical neighborhood for the Chinese immigrant community. Today, Chinatown residents are seeing the signs of its disappearance. It used to be filled with these bilingual street signs, but over the years, you know, when the DOT Department of Transportation replaces these signs, they don't often replace it with a bilingual street sign, and it's just an English-only sign. So, in the recent months, there have been a lot of advocacy work surrounding the street signs and a push to replace these street signs with bilingual street signs. Street signs in Manhattan's Chinatown have been featuring both English and Chinese street names since the 1960s. The signs symbolize the linguistic diversity of New York and the neighborhood's rich history. But in recent decades, the community saw a decline in these bilingual street signs. Chloe Chan is a Cantonese American tour guide that wants to celebrate and preserve Chinatown. To her, the signs are a significant part of the neighborhood's heritage and culture. Even growing up in Manhattan Chinatown, like when we walk around the neighborhood, my parents would refer to these streets by their Cantonese names, right? So I think it just holds a very nostalgic, I guess, sense for a lot of us Chinese Americans that grew up in Chinatown. And even when we lead our walking tours, we always take our guests to the three oldest streets of Manhattan Chinatown, which is Ma Street, Pell Street, and Dory Street. And I just think it's so cool how back in the day, people were able to take these English street signs and found like such an apt Cantonese translation for it. And I think there's just so much like beauty, you know, in translating this very English street sign into, I guess, something that immigrants can relate to and can speak with confidence. The Chinese language has many varieties. Cantonese, Mandarin, Toisanese, and Fujianese are the most common dialects spoken in Manhattan's Chinatown. Although the dialects sound drastically different from each other, the written street names can be understood by all Chinese immigrants. Most English street names are translated phonetically into Cantonese. For example, Ma Street in Cantonese is Mutt Guy. So it wasn't it wouldn't really make a lot of sense if you say in Mandarin, which is like Wu Jie. So I just like love that fact. And also Cantonese is a dying dialect, so the fact that it's still spoken around Chinatown um, and is reflected in our streets, I just think is such a beautiful thing. But the significance of the street signs is more than symbolic. Nearly 60% of Chinese New Yorkers have limited English proficiency. That is more than double the rate of New Yorkers overall and highest among Asian ethnic groups. Wellington Chan, the executive director of Chinatown Business Improvement District, is an involved member of the community. He says that many Chinese immigrants rely on bilingual street signs to navigate the streets. I once got a call in the office and I said, can you at least spell the alphabet, the street that you're standing under? Because he, he couldn't find my office. And I said, what's the spelling? And he said, O-N-E-W-A-Y. This is a linguistically challenged community. If you don't have those street signs, they don't know what street they are at. And so it is not just, uh, yeah, it's so nice to define Chinatown. No, it is also about a necessity. The disappearance of Chinese street signs isn't out of the blue. All throughout North America, Chinatowns have endured many challenges in recent years. Not only did the pandemic bring about a spike in racial violence against Asian Americans, the decline in tourism also resulted in Chinatown's economic downturn. To Chloe, the signs are clear. Chinatown is struggling to survive. I think it kind of ties back to the fact that Chinatown and just a lot of these immigrant neighborhoods are getting gentrified, right? Like oftentimes these historical and legacy businesses, you know, their children don't want to take over these businesses because, you know, they might have gone to college. They have these white collar corporate jobs. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for them to take over the family business. And so I think it kind of ties to the fact that a lot of like small businesses are coming into a neighborhood that might not necessarily be Asian owned um, or serve the community. So I think that might be another reason because the Chinatown residents here are aging. Um, and so I think there isn't a lot of incentive to replace the signs with bilingual street signs. But the community remains hopeful. This year, local activists started a campaign to save the Chinatown street signs. Because of their effort, the Department of Transportation announced that six bilingual signs will be reinstalled. What we've seen in the past decade was that they took 155 bilingual signs, and now in Chinatown, we only have around 100. We're going to change that. And so today, we're introducing a bill uh, to not only protect the street signs that are there, but to increase street signs not only in Chinatown, but throughout the city in the five boroughs. 
so people think that uh, it's so easy to erase this community. No, we are, we are tough as nail, we're resilient, and we are very adaptable, just like all the great human beings and great New Yorkers here. The science says we belong here.